G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. Perhaps one of Minecraft's most underrated resource is experience. Which you can get for literally doing anything. And most of the ways that we can actually obtain XP are perfectly good enough for the actual use cases. Because of this, we don't actually see a lot of technical investigation into the specific details of how experience works. But since 1.19 introduces new mechanics for interacting with XP, I figured it would be a great topic to talk about. This is actually my very first time interacting with these skulk blocks, so let's see how much XP we can actually get out of it. What, how much XP was that? Exactly one experience point. Now that is hilariously underpowered. Alright, but what happens if I mine the Skulk Catalyst? Okay, that looks a little bit better. How much did we get that time? So, if we actually do the math, two levels is about 16 experience points, plus the additional four that we have in our experience bar, gives us 20 XP in total from the Skulk Catalyst. And for some reason, Merging decided to make it that the Warden actually drops a single Skulk Catalyst upon death, effectively making it renewable. And this change makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, because I was under the impression that the Warden was supposed to be the kind of mob that you don't want to kill. Alright, so what we've established is that mining Skulk blocks is effectively useless for getting XP, but mining the Skulk Catalyst yields a pretty decent amount of XP, and for some reason the Skulk Catalyst is actually renewable. So let's milk this for everything that it's got. This right here is an incredible Wither Cage concept by Scorpio. You know, the guy who helped me out with my Obsidian End platform farm. Anyway, since then, he's developed this amazing concept for a Wither Cage, which is actually fully unload proof, and prevents the Withers from shooting Blue Skulls entirely. But what I want to do with this today, is make a point about experience in general. So, assuming that I have a supply of Scott Catalyst, all I need to do is turn this on, walk up to this booth, aim at this target block and hold down the right mouse button. Alright, with our carpet bot on hand to place down the blocks for us, we can show the system working from outside. As you can see, we simply have the player placing down a Scott Catalyst every 4 game ticks to obtain that 20 XP every 4 game ticks. This means we are easily able to obtain 100 XP per second. So that's cool, but what was the point about XP that I wanted to make? Well, a Skulk Catalyst drops 20 XP, but a block such as a Spawner can drop up to 40 XP. So, assuming that you have a supply of Spawners to place down willingly, Yo. surely the Spawners would produce XP faster than the Scott Catalyst. So let's try it out. I'm going to give the spawner to our carpet bot. And now, we are extracting the XP from the spawners. But you will start to notice something. Now we have XP orbs building up on our player. If I make our player disappear quickly, what you will see left behind there's a whole heap of XP orbs that they weren't able to absorb. If I go back into creative, and start sucking up the XP, you can see there is a fundamental limit to the speed in which I can suck up this XP. Here we have a simple setup for summoning XP. Right now, we're summoning an XP orb every 4 game ticks. However, if we just speed this up, like so, now we're doing two orbs every four game ticks, or one orb every two game ticks. As you can see, I'm still able to reliably pick up every single orb. But the instant that I go above an orb every two game ticks, like so, what you'll notice is that the XP orbs start building up around my character. And this is the fundamental bottleneck with all XP farms. The rate at which the player can actually pick up the orbs is one orb every two game ticks. And this is where we start to get into the very interesting mechanics behind experience orbs. Let's say there's a mechanic that drops XP, such as killing the wither. 
Notice how killing that wither dropped not one, but four different experience orbs. Now killing a wither drops exactly 50 XP, but that XP is subdivided into those four XP orbs that we observed. And the way that Minecraft decides how these XP orbs are distributed is actually very interesting because you'll notice we have this XP orb which is quite small and this XP orb which is quite large so they all have different quantities. Here is a gallery of all the XP orbs you can possibly create in vanilla survival. At the very bottom we have 1 XP then we have the free XP 7 17, 37, 73, 149, 307, 617, 1237, and finally, the largest XP orb you can create in Vanilla Survival, which I like to call the God Particle, which can store 2,477 experience points. And what is extremely interesting about these numbers is that they are all prime numbers and you can access every number possible using just this set of prime numbers. From a game development standpoint, I think the reasoning behind this is that it makes the XP orbs look organic and sort of natural in the way that they generate. If we look back at the example of our wither, which dropped exactly 50 XP when killed, if we have a look at our gallery of XP orbs, we start by finding the largest, which is less than 50, which is 37. We subtract 37 from 50, leaving us with 13. Then find the next largest XP orb, less than 13, which is 7. Subtract 7, which leaves us with 6. Then we go on to free XP, giving us free left over, and we subtract another free to give us zero. So in total, our wither which drops 50 XP, drops four orbs. One, which is 37 XP, another, which is seven XP, and then two orbs of free XP. And that is exactly how many orbs our wither actually drops. So if we collect all of our knowledge here, combining the fact that the player can only suck up a single XP orb every two game ticks, with the fact that every source of XP is subdivided into this set of XP orbs, we can deduce that the ultimate XP farm is one that is capable of producing a god particle every two game ticks. By the way, on a quick side note, this is a really fascinating thing that I found out about XP orbs with negative values. Now the only way to make XP with negative values currently is with commands. And when they have a negative value, something very interesting happens when they interact with equipment such as armor and tools with mending. If I start generating these XP orbs, what you'll start seeing is the durability starts getting sapped away from all of my gear. And personally, I think this is actually a pretty cool concept. Like imagine if Mojang were to introduce a new mob into some new biome, that when you killed it actually dropped toxic XP, which counteracts the effects of mending armor. In my personal opinion, I think that mending on gear in general is just kind of overpowered anyway. Actually, I just noticed something pretty funny. My durability has gone into negative values. Which means, the instant I take damage... <laughs> that's hilarious. But yeah, it would be pretty cool if there was a way to interact with negative XP orbs in survival. So how does somebody obtain a god particle in Minecraft? What we need is a mechanic where a single event will produce over 2,477 XP. The Ender Dragon, when initially spawned for the first time in survival, drops 12,000 XP when killed. Which means we would expect killing the Ender Dragon to produce at least 4 God Particles. But unfortunately, what the Ender Dragon actually does when you kill it, 
is that 12,000 XP is split into multiple waves of 1,000 XP. So unfortunately, still no God Particle. It turns out that the only way to produce the required XP for a God Particle is using a furnace. This might sound silly, but check this out. If we go ahead and check the talented data for this furnace, like so, all we can see is that under the tag recipes used, we have smelted exactly 2,477 cases of green dye which comes from smelting cactus. If I break this furnace in survival, we obtain our god particle and it instantly shoots me up to level 37. Right here, I have the tabulated data from the Minecraft wiki about the amount of XP produced per item when smelted in a furnace, smoker or blast furnace. And up here you can see that Cactus produces one experience point per smelting operation, which is on par with other non-renewable resources like the various ores. Some people might think that this is kind of overpowered to have Cactuses behave this way, but in my personal opinion, Effectively all of these numbers are relatively low given the difficulty in actually using furnaces to extract XP. Like if it was considered to be unbalanced to have cactus in this category, I would argue that we should instead buff everything else instead of nerfing just cactus. So what is the best recipe to use to get the most out of your XP? Well, a regular furnace, smelting cactus, which is highly renewable, gives you 360 XP per hour. A smoker, which is capable of smelting specific products like food at twice the speed of a furnace, can cook fish, giving 252 XP per hour. A smoker doing kelp, however, only gives a measly 72 XP per hour. And the blast furnace is incapable of smelting anything that is actually renewable. This is something that really bugs me about all these furnace variants. The most common use for the blast furnace is as a decoration block. Because the blast furnace's ability to smelt items at twice the speed is completely wasted on being restricted to only smelting items that you have to pull out of the ground manually that are not renewable and that you will never need the increased speed for like you would with more common resources like stone or cobblestone which can be farmed on massive scales. Anyway, after all of that we have established that the best way to get XP out of our furnaces is with the regular furnace and the good old cactus. And here we start running into some technical issues. The furnace is the only way to accumulate enough XP in a single source to produce our god particle. But furnaces are also very slow. With a regular furnace smelting one cactus every 10 seconds, it will take 6 hours and 53 minutes to obtain a single god particle. To speed this up, we can of course add multiple furnaces to produce multiple god particles in parallel. But let's say you wanted to produce a god particle every two game ticks to achieve the maximum amount of XP possible. We would need a 2477 experience points multiplied by 10 seconds per cactus smelted, multiplied by 20 game ticks per second divided by two game ticks per god particle, gives us 247,700 furnaces that we'll need running in parallel to produce a god particle every two game ticks. If we then take this number and have that many cactuses smelted every 10 seconds, what we end up with is needing 89 million 172,000 cactus per hour. Now it's time for some insane calculations. 
This right here is a schematic depicting the entire random tick range of the player. If we take a look at the material list, we can see that the area covered by this shape is 49,404 blocks. Then if we consider the total volume from negative 64 all the way to 319, we obtain a total volume of roughly 19 million blocks. Taking some stats from an efficient cactus farm by TT, which has the stats of about 0.18 cactuses per block hour multiplied by the amount of blocks within our volume gives us a total rate of about 3.4 million cactus per hour if we were to fill the entire render distance of the player with a cactus farm. And yet despite all of these efforts we would still need 27 of these gargantuan full random tick range cactus farms in order to sustain our god particle production. Something tells me that building 27 of these massive cactus bricks is probably going to be quite prohibitive. So unfortunately we've dashed all hope of making Minecraft's most powerful XP farm in survival. And even if you are able to build 27 of these in survival, the amount of lag that all of those cactus item entities are going to cause is going to grind your server to a halt. This is a perfect example of a prohibitive mechanic. What we want is to produce a god particle every two gain ticks to attain the max amount of XP possible, but in practice with Minecraft's current level of technology, it is simply not possible. So unfortunately, in our quest to obtain the god particle, we're going to need to make some compromises. Compromise number one. I'm going to be working in creative to make sure that I can at least show that the concept is theoretically viable. Compromise number two, I have enabled movable block entities using carpet. And compromise number three, we will only obtain our max XP for a short burst. First of all, we need one hell of a furnace array. This is my concept for a movable tile entity base furnace array capable of producing furnaces that have smelted exactly 2477 cactus. What we have here is this enormous furnace array conveyor belt which moves our furnaces every 64 seconds where they will traverse roughly 10 blocks before they reach these stations which inject the furnaces with cactus that they smelt very gradually as they move along. And even though this is technically viable, if we take a look at the MSPT, an unfortunate side effect is that furnaces in general are just extremely laggy. And so scaling up a furnace array like this is extremely lag inefficient. And even with this furnace array, we still only get a god particle every 2.7 seconds. But what if there was a way to store the furnaces and then release them all in one big burst? That is exactly the idea behind these auto block storages. What we have is a block silo capable of storing up to 1728 blocks within a cubic volume. Right now, the auto block storage is currently in filling mode, meaning Imagine we have our massive ass furnace array going off into the distance here, loading up all of these furnaces with god particles, and then stocking up this block storage at whatever speed we want. This means it doesn't matter how fast our furnace array is, it can be as slow as we want, and all we need to do is stock up the auto block storage. At the block stream output, we can automatically recycle the powdered snow back into the system that will use the powdered snow to displace the furnaces out as we consume the furnaces for their god particles. So with four of these block storages and 1728 furnaces in each one of them, 
Consuming our furnaces, every two game ticks obtain the maximum XP possible, and that gives us roughly 11 and a half minutes of full speed god particle saturation. So let's just go ahead and speed these along, and appreciate the raw technical beauty of an auto block storage. There we go. The block storage has now detected that it's full and has switched into unloading mode. So all we need to do is trigger that note block right there and we can start consuming all of those god particles stocked up in those furnaces. So how about we go ahead and let it rip. Let's get in position. Put ourselves into survival so we can see what level we are. Here we go, we've got the first batch of god particles coming in. And here it goes. At the beginning, our XP will start climbing very quickly. However, as the player gains levels, the amount of XP needed to gain the next level increases exponentially. Meaning that we gain levels more slowly as we get to higher levels. If we take a look at my character, you can see we don't have any XP building up. It's all getting absorbed because we're producing exactly one god particle every two game tick, which is matching perfectly with the speed that the player can pick up the XP orbs. If we check up on our auto block storages, you can see that I am using the powdered snow to displace the furnaces out of the storages where they get collected into a block stream and merge together into our blast chamber. Here we go, level 1000. Easy. And we've barely scratched the capacity of these furnaces. And there we have it. Those are all the levels that I obtained from completely emptying those auto block storages of furnaces. I have to admit that I originally started this project over a year ago, but I was constantly put down by the fact that it was so infeasible in survival. However, I eventually figured it would be cool to show anyway at least the creative process behind how to solve an extremely prohibitive problem like this in Minecraft. I hope I haven't let anybody down by how impractical this whole concept is. But let me know if you actually enjoy this kind of content, that even though it's not possible in survival, it's still a cool concept to investigate in creative. Although it did lead to the invention of these auto block storages which may have their uses in other farms. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.